chapter 3 is. Okay. Would you like to read for us? Revelation. Uh, chapter 3. From this one. Uh, to read verse 1 and. Uh, yeah. Read, read the, whole, the whole letter to Sardis. Okay. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, right. Mm -hmm. This thing says, who, He who has the seven spirits of God mm -hmm. and the seven stars. Mm -hmm. I know your works, mm -hmm. that you have a name, mm -hmm. that you are alive, mm -hmm. but you are dead. Yes. Be watchful and strengthen the, the things which you mean that are ready to die. Mm -hmm. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Mm -hmm. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard, mm -hmm. hold fast and repent. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Verse 4. Mm. You have a few names, even in the Sardis, even in Sardis, mm. who have mm. not Sardis. defiled mm. their garments, mm. and they shall walk with me in white, Hallelujah. for they are worthy. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. He who overcomes shall be clothed mm. in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Mm -hmm. And now I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Verse 6. He who has the yes. ear, let him hear yes. what the Spirit yes. says to the churches. Amen. Amen. I, I feel like just just uh, uh, just pouring out, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what the, 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 the understanding I receive here. Amen. Amen. So last time we said, mm -hmm. last time we only dwelt in this one, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, main of this one. Yeah, one, one, yeah. Prostar. But dead. Yeah, but are dead. So we were trying to understand, why is he raising the seven spirits of God? Yeah? Mm -hmm. We understood that he is raising now, again, before, before I say that, is raising now the seven spirits of God because of the condition of the church in Sardis. I said, these letters to these churches are in fact letters from God. You said, if God were to write you a letter, if God was to write a letter for your church, for your Bible study, how will it sound like? We say, so we, we really need to be careful in our worship. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that when he writes to the church in Sardis, as he wrote to other churches, he takes an element, a revelation from chapter 1, from what John saw, mm -hmm. because he said what you see and what you hear, right. Mm -hmm. So from what he saw, the Lord raises one of those elements, one of those revelations, whether it's the revelation of the eyes or the revelation of the soul, to speak the message, the instruction to the church. That, that means, truly, the prophecy was in the details. He takes one of the details to speak the message. And that instruction was packed. Was packed with the rebuke, was packed with the word of exhortation, was packed with the promise. So that message, that means even as he raises the seven spirits of God here and the seven stars, and that means this is where the message to Sardis is coming from. The exhortation, the rebuke, yeah? and the promise that awaits the church in Sardis. And indeed the entire church of Christ, because we see that the promise that he speaks to each and one, every one of these churches is essentially the promise to the church of Christ collectively. Yes? Whether it's the new name, we believe, we trust that everyone is going to receive a new name in the kingdom of God. That everyone is, who goes into the kingdom of God will be clothed in white. That everybody that goes into the kingdom of God will be ruling with Christ. He says, For you have made us kings and priests, or a kingdom of priests, and we shall reign with you on the earth, for they shall reign with him on the earth. Amen? Amen. Okay, good. And we say it, Owing to the gravity of what he is raising, we can see the reason why the church in Sardis was dead. Yeah? Because he says, I know your works, that you have a name 
that you are alive but are dead. He says, you are known for being alive. You have a, a form of worship, but the substance is missing. He says, this characterizes or this gives us the true definition of the super spiritual a superficial scoop of spiritual Christianity. Sentimental Christianity. Sentimental Christianity. The true definition of super spiritual and eh? superficial super spiritual Christianity. Just a form. But the substance is missing. And we say this this weighs gravity because the one who is speaking is the one who gives the life giving spirit. And that's what the seven spirits of God mean. This is the life-giving spirit of God. That the owner of this spirit, eh, the owner of this life-giving spirit, he says, I know you, Sardis. You ain't got my spirit. You are dead. Because only when the church has the Holy Spirit of God, then is she truly alive. Amen? Amen. Do you agree with me? Yes. That only when money is filled with the spirit of God, then she is truly alive. Even you and me. Amen? Amen. That as for an individual Christian or as a collective body of Christ, that only when we are filled with the Spirit of Christ are we truly alive. We read from the book of John where he says, it is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And then we, we say, now if this church is dead, then what does that mean? If the Holy Spirit is not there, the sevenfold Spirit of Christ is not there, what does that mean? That means, as we look in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the list, it says, wisdom is missing, mm -hmm. counsel is missing, mm -hmm. understanding is missing, mm -hmm. the fear of the Lord is missing, mm -hmm. power is missing, mm -hmm. the spirit of the Lord is missing, mm -hmm. the spirit of counsel is missing. Then that means, carnality has taken over this church of Sardis. And essentially, every church that ain't got the spirit of God. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the church that has not because that's what he says in the book of Romans he says, for to be carnally minded is death, death. Mm -hmm. talking about death when you, when you ask a, a doctor no, uh, before that, you see when I, when I checked up I just, cause I, I just checked uh, the, 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 the Greek translation the word death there of course is the word necros no? mm -hmm. And, and the doctors know that the word necro, necrotic, nec necros, that we use it to describe dead tissues, necrotic cells, or necro, uh, what is it, coagulative necrosis, or <laughs> whatever necrosis. And it is, it is characterized by certain events that take place in the cell. That meaning, and when the church is dead, then that means there are certain structures that are missing in the church. Indeed, it is this life-giving spirit of Christ with these seven strong pillars, mm -hmm. wisdom, ra uh, 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 counsel, the fear of the Lord, that th these are missing and they are replaced by carnality, meaning the wisdom that this church is operating by is a carnal wisdom. Mm -hmm. That the counsel that this church is operating by is a carnal counsel, carnal, carnal philosophy of human beings. They, they, they want the psychology of human. That means this church has been taken over, has been ransacked, has been arrested. Did you get me? Mm -hmm. Has been taken over, has been arrested. <laughs> by worldliness, by carnality. And then that ensues death. Amen? Amen. But he says, I know your works. Implying that He's, he's, really, he's really depicting as one who has an intimate understanding and knowledge of this church. No? See, God knows each and every one of us. You can't hide from Him. You cannot pretend to the Lord. Can we? No. no. You can pretend to me, but not to the Lord. No? No. Ah, you, can, you may even be able to fool me into making me believe that you go to church. And maybe you really do go to church, as this church, no? But the substance there, says you cannot fool God. David said, even if I were to, to fly on the wings of the morning, behold, even there you are there. 
If I decide to go to hell to hide from you, you are also there. Your presence is everywhere. Amen? Amen. God knows everything. Everything about our lives. And indeed the church that has not adhered to, the, to this life-giving spirit. But you see now, I realize something also. That if the Holy Spirit of God is missing in this church, then that means something also was missing. Because when you go to the book of Romans chapter 5, it says, verse 5, it says, it says, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given unto us. Is that what you're saying? What does it say? Now hope does not disappoint yes. because the love of God has been poured out in yeah. our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Meaning it is the Holy Spirit who gives the love of God into our hearts. Who should, some translations say, shed abroad. Oh, yeah. I have shed abroad. You have shed abroad. Yes, for, for the love of God has been shed abroad, has been taken over. That means the Holy Spirit has shed abroad, has lavished, has poured out the love of God in our hearts. And if the Holy Spirit of God is missing, then that means even the love of God is missing in that church. But it is impressive that he goes on to pursue this church even though it was dead. You see the love of God nevertheless. No? The church is dead. But I'm also tempted to think, or I'm also caused to think, that how come this church does not have the Spirit of God? How? How come eh, you became a church, but you ain't got the Spirit? <laughs> or could it be that they became the church, as they became the church, they were filled with the Spirit, and when they were filled with the Spirit, they misused the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit left. Or perhaps they abandoned the Holy Spirit of God. Or maybe they chased away the Holy Spirit of God. <laughs> They don't believe in dreams anymore. They don't believe in prophecy as well. Because it's like for the prophecies, the spirit of he says the spirit of Christ is, is on, what is it saying in the Revelation there? For the spirit of prophecy is, is the spirit of Christ, something like that. It says they, they, and, 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 and it says the life giving spirit of Christ is absent. How can you become a church? Eh? <laughs> when you have you have no, no Holy Spirit. How? How can you become a church without the Holy Spirit? Because you can only become a church when the Holy Spirit has done such a work in you that He has transformed you from being a child of darkness to become a child of light. And then when you become a child of light, then it will be said that you are the body of Christ. And that's what we call the church. Then <laughs> that means at one point, this church was filled with the Holy Spirit. What happened? How come Holy Spirit left this church? Then that is a warning also then. Then that, means that, that speaks a warning to us. Because you cannot become a church without the Holy Spirit. And for the church, for the Holy Spirit to be missing from the church, that means the Holy Spirit had left. Now what are the things that cause the Holy Spirit to leave the church? That that church may now be called a dead church, a dead Christian, a dead believer. It's even a, a, it's a what do you call it? It's an oxymoron. You say you are a believer, but you are dead. It, they don't, the two don't go together. Mm -hmm. Because a believer is supposed to be alive, but now you are dead. New <laughs> Peru they, they The two are not going together. They say, how can you be a believer without the Holy Spirit? And if the Holy Spirit is missing, then that means he left. What caused the Holy Spirit to leave? <laughs> now we have to examine ourselves. That means at one point, this church woke up singing, worshiping, <coughs> meeting and eating thinking they have the Holy Spirit, but He's no longer there. Ah. 
That's powerful. Yeah. Or you should I say scary? Yeah? <laughs> <Both> <laughs> they, <laughs> they started off well, eh? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues, maybe. Eh? The sick were getting healed. And the Lord was blessing their number. And then, one day, <laughs> one day, they came together, praying in the Holy Ghost, or so they thought, fasting, jumping, eh? high-fiving each other. Hey, brother, how are you doing? But the Holy Spirit is gone. <laughs> so, they were a walking corpse. Eh? Dead men walking. <laughs> That's scary. Wait a minute. He's saying, this guy is the same. They didn't even know he left. Ah, this is scary now. Eh? Until he addressed the issue. <laughs> he left. They didn't know he was gone. Until he said, I know you. You don't have him. He is gone. How? Am I shouting? Are you getting me? Am I, am I speaking something? Mm -hmm. eh? How come he left? If he's not there, that means he left. That's a tragedy. Then that means this church walked in deception. <laughs> Who deceived this church? Who deceived Sardis? Who deceived Sardis to wake up in the morning, eh? singing worship songs, thinking she's got the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is gone. Deception. How? Who deceived? Eh? This is scary now. He's saying, watch out church. Deception. So you can already see the message now. Eh? Or we are just at the beginning. He says, I know you. <laughs> he says, you, Sardis, I know you. You cannot lie to me. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You are deceived. Now he's speaking of deception. Could it be that he is saying to you and me, be careful of deception. That you think not that you have the Holy Spirit when in fact he is gone. Hey, I wish I had more time. <laughs> Amen. I Amen. wish I had more time. Because this is now this now causes us. To answer some question, how did he leave? What causes the Holy Spirit to leave? Because it is evident that if you are you are a church, then that means you had been you had received the Holy Spirit. He is he himself, the Lord, the master of the church, confirms that Sardis is his church. He says, and to the messenger of Sardis, or to the to the angel of the church in Sardis, write. Then that means he even stationed a messenger, an angel, to guard over this church. Yeah? That means this one was once a living body, but now it's a corpse. And the question is, how come? What happened? How did the Holy Spirit leave? When? Why? Deception. He says, they walked in deception. Who deceived them? Eh, there's a lot of questions to answer here. Who deceived them? Amen? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I'm going to answer all these questions today. We will try to answer them next time. Yes. <laughs> but I remember one time I was at Poly in Namibia. This question came to my mind. How come... <coughs> now I'm giving you the answer now. now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going back and then I just come back a little bit. I, I'm, going, I'm going in front, I just forward and then reverse a little bit. <laughs> How come the enemy, the deceiver, that 
ancient serpent. Yeah? Of How come he found his way into the church? Because now, if you, are, if you are hearing a church that is walking in carnality, mm. that means this church had believed another message, another gospel. Because if, as long as the church is focusing her eyes on the true gospel, she will, she will continue walking in life. The Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will continue guiding her, leading her, teaching her, instructing her, rebuking her, correcting her, and causing her to grow up, to mature. But now this church is dead because the life-giving spirit is missing. Stagnation, deception, regression, death, destruction. You know, he's saying, what the Holy Spirit is missing in your life, even though we see very good washed face and loud prayers we are hearing from your room, if the Holy Spirit is missing, <clears throat> heaven looks at you and says dead. Pronounced dead in, heavenly, in the heavenly records. And that's a warning to you now that we may not become. You, you see that the church became, that means it is possible for a church, for a believer, to move away from the spiritual stature where he's growing into Christ, maturing, it is possible to fall from such a stature eh, into death. He's warning us to watch out. Watch out that you do not lose that whole, the Holy Spirit that has been given unto you. Precious Holy Spirit. The only one who can keep us going, persevering, enduring, truly connecting with heaven. The one who gives life to our prayers. The one who truly causes us to understand the word of God. Amen. And walk in truth. And worship in truth and in spirit. Amen. Only the Holy Spirit. And when he's missing, you just take him out. And then you are left with nothing but dead corpse. Amen? May the Lord keep us from such a... May the Lord keep us from necrosis. <laughs> Death. Eh? May the Lord keep us from the necrosis that has, that has overtaken the church of Sardis. Amen? Amen? I think my time is up. Let us pray. There's a, there's a lot. We just scratch the surface. Scratch, 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 scratch. <laughs> so next time I think about how the Holy Spirit leaves. How did the Holy Spirit leave this church? Because it is evident mm -hmm. that He was there, and He left. Mm -hmm. How? Why? And if they were, if the church of Sardis was here, say, when? Mm -hmm. But then they wouldn't know, because. They were still worshipping. <laughs> worshipping. But he's gone. Eh? Deception. Then, 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 then that means now, now we need to talk about this deception that leads to death. That leads us away, away, away from the Holy Spirit's leading into death, into destruction. Amen? Amen. May, the, may the Lord help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit with the sevenfold spirit of God, to be filled with wisdom, to be filled with the spirit of God, to be filled with the spirit of wisdom and <coughs> the spirit of the fear of the Lord and the spirit of counsel and the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of, of understanding and wise counsel. Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for precious Holy Spirit that you have given us. A free gift. You said, when I'm gone, you said, when you go, you will send us another, the paraclete, the one who is exactly like you, the Holy Spirit of God. You said you will send him and he will teach us. You said in the book of Romans chapter 8 that when he is truly in us, he will give us life. And he will give life to our mortal bodies. That when he is in us, then our mind we are truly living. In our heart, in our spirit, then we are truly living. Now I pray Holy Spirit that you, that you fill us even here tonight. That you keep filling us every day. Holy Spirit, 
keep us away from the necrosis that had overtaken the church of Sardis and help us to be a living Bible study, a living devotion, a living Christian, individually and collectively. Keep us away from sin, which is the characteristic and the fruit of death. Or sin. Whichever. But Lord, keep us away from that necrosis, from that death, that pungent smell that is, that is displeasing to God. Help us, O oh Lord, to walk in the steps of Christ, to live like Christ, to be as Christ in this world today, to love like he loved, to be transformed into the image of Christ, to keep growing in him, to be transformed into his image daily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.